Hi, this is Kelly Jo from sunny Perth, Australia. If you couldn't tell by my accent. Um, and this is the latest episode of Sinister Sightings. Your stories leave me shaken, not stirred. Uh, they are wonderful and amazing and keep them coming. And I'm so excited for this episode. So kick back, grab a cheeky glass of wine and enjoy. And I'm Carrie. And we are Paranormal Chicks. Sinister Sightings 28. And you just heard Kelly Jo from Australia. She killed it. I know. Oh my gosh. When she sent that in, she said that she sounded like a talk show host. Or, (laughs) I'm sorry, a game show host. (laughs) I was like, no, you don't. But you do. But it's in the best way possible. I love it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, the accent. I know. And y'all know the drill. If you want to be as awesome as Kelly Joe and introduce a Sinister Sightings episode, head to patreon.com slash the APC podcast. Yep, that's it. All right, you ready to just jump right in? Mm-hmm. Even though I feel like we should do a game show. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Although, we were guessing, this bitch, we were guessing how many bloopers we had this month with Will. <laughs> And this bitch price is righted me. <laughs> well, actually, you did the opposite because you went up a point yeah. instead of down. But I was like, damn. Okay. Hey, girls. I'm Tanya, and I live in the haunted deep south. Louisiana, that is. I'm going gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna to tell you one of my favorite paranormal stories that happened to me. I call it the paranormal lights. At the time, I lived alone in a big three-bedroom, two-story home. Sounds fancy, but it wasn't at all. It was an older home, but in an artsy neighborhood. The older owners had passed. The house needed updating, and I got it for a steal. It was a rainy evening, and I was home alone. It was late, and I was watching ghost shows on TV in the back room. Like one does. I mean, duh. This was before the time of ghost adventures and the zillions of other ghost shows, so it was a treat for me. I live in a shotgun-style house, which means that the house is basically narrow but long. From the back room, you can see all the way to the front of the house. My front door was a little further to the left, so I could see the front window but not the front door until I walked into the front room. As I'm watching the ghost show, my ceiling fan and light start going faster and slower, brighter and dimmer. Then my TV screen actually got brighter than dimmer and brighter than dimmer. That shit was freaky. I've never heard of a TV getting brighter than dimmer. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't sound good. Needless to say, this was freaking me out a bit. So I called my mom just to share the crazy experience with her. Once again, she berated me for watching ghost stories by myself (laughs) late at night during the rain. She told me to change the channel. And so I did and watched an episode of Friends. Since it seemed to have stopped and I quickly got bored, I went back to the ghost shows. (laughs) So I'm back watching the ghost show again, and the damn, literally, ceiling fan starts going faster and slower, and the light's getting brighter and dimmer. Then the TV screen, brighter and dimmer. And it's really starting to freak me out again. What the hell? Seriously. So I turn the TV off, and I decide to walk to the front of the house to see if it happens in any other room. As I walk through the threshold of the back room into the middle room, I see the front of my house bathed in red light. Mm -mm. Holy Jesus, the portal to hell is on my porch. (laughs) So I see this red ominous light in the front room, and I know I have nothing red lit up there. I'm walking slowly to the front door to look out the window, scared shitless. Through the front windows, nothing but red lights breaking through the dark room and silence. I creep to the front door and peek out my tiny little window to see the local electric company working on the electricity outside, (laughs) which was the whole reason my electrical was acting so crazy. (laughs) It was only a coincidence that it only seemed to happen when I was watching the ghost shows. Now, in my defense, I did say this was a paranormal story, not a ghost story. 
And I don't know about you. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but this was nothing normal. <laughs> I do actually have better ghost stories to come. Tanya from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. <laughs> that is one of my favorite things when people are like, like I feel like Ghost Bros, that show is really good about this. Like yeah. where it's like, oh my God, it's, but oh no, it's just a mouse. Or you know what I mean? Yeah, like or that, it's like, an AC unit in yes. the window. Or her, Avi. Like, oh my God, it's a portal to hell. Or it's just yeah. <laughs> Louisiana Power Company. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is great. I just found your podcast, and I'm loving all the spooky stories, both true crime and paranormal. Yay. Thank you. I just finished listening to your episode about shadow men, and I totally experienced sleep paralysis at least every few months. Nope. Don't like that. Y'all are right. It is awful, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. I wake up and am very aware that I'm awake and I cannot move my body at all. Almost every time it's happened, I am aware that there is someone in the room, Mm -mm. typically in the corner. Mm -mm. While I can't see them clearly, I would definitely describe them exactly as the dude from the crime watch signs. I am very aware that they are there and can do nothing to move. It is the creepiest thing and always stays with me after I finally wake up for a date or two. Thanks so much for officially creeping me out. I always just assumed it was a dream. Oh, God. Keep creeping me out. I love it, Courtney. I would be so fucking scared if I just thought I had been dreaming and then I heard your story and I was like, it wasn't a dream. (laughs) Right. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. This sounds familiar. Yeah. Mm, Yeah, that's. Holy shit, that's him. Yeah. You know? Oh, my God. Yay, girl, you've been seeing the hat man. (gasps) I don't like that. Oh, God, that's scary. Mm Mm-mm. Hey, ladies, my name is Dee, and I thought I would write in and tell you a few ghost stories I've experienced. But before I do, I want to tell you what happened to me the other night. I always listen to your podcast at night just before I fall asleep with my headphones on so I don't wake hubby. Well, I made the mistake of doing that when I was very tired the other night and I fell asleep listening to your podcast. It was still going in my ear when all of a sudden I sat straight up in my bed. My husband looked at me and asked what was wrong. I finally realized what had happened. I had the sound a little too loud for your podcast and both of you lovely ladies laughed. (laughs) Guilty. (laughs) Which woke me up from my sleep. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Once my heart rate dropped, I told my husband he thought it was funny. Oh my gosh, we're sorry. My first story about my first ever ghost experience was when I was 11. I slept on the top level of a bunk bed. When my grandfather would go home, he would always come in and tap me on the feet and wave to me and blow a kiss before he left. This night, I woke up and saw my grandfather standing at the end of my bed. He did his usual wave to me, but didn't blow me a kiss and then disappeared. I was very close to my grandfather and was a little upset because he didn't blow me a kiss. I went to go look for my grandfather and realized my mom and dad were in bed. Mom woke up and went, what's wrong? Mom! (laughs) I said grandpa woke me up and waved but didn't blow me a kiss. Where is he? I want to kiss him goodnight before he goes. Mom proceeded to tell me that it was 1 a.m. I must have been dreaming. Aww. I would not believe her. I had to search the house. After searching the house, I finally went to bed about 10 minutes later. Mom had just gotten back into bed when the house phone rang. She answered it, and it was my uncle telling my mom that my grandfather had died about 15 minutes ago (gasps) from a massive heart attack. Holy shit! My grandpa came to say goodbye to me as he died. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. That's like, but it's so heartwarming, too. I know. It's so sweet. So sad. My second story has a few parts to it. Sorry if it's a little long. About 18 months after my grandmother died, my son and I were watching TV at 1130 p.m. My lounge faced the back wall, and the TV was on the wall nearest the dining room. To the right of the TV was a very large doorway, which opened up to our dining room. We were watching one of the Die Hard movies as it was close to Christmas. When I noticed what looked like my grandmother walked across the doorway that leads to the dining room. 
Before I could say anything to my son, he said, Mom, I just saw old Nan walk across the doorway. (laughs) My mouth nearly hit the floor. We both saw her. That is wild. Yes. This same thing happened around three years ago. She had been gone about eight years now. Fast forward six months ago, we had a beautiful little rescue cat named Strider who was normally in bed asleep at the end of my son's bed before 1130. This night, my son was away, so the cat was sleeping on my lap on the lounge while I was watching TV. At exactly 11.30 p.m., he jumps up from my lounge, runs over to the same spot where my son and I had seen my grandmother before, and starts hissing. Curious as to what was going on, I watched him. Within about 10 seconds of him going over there, he stopped hissing and started jumping up and rubbing against something invisible. Holy shit! It was like what cats do when they rub against someone's leg. Mm -mm. Don't like it when they do that when I'm there, and I don't like it when they do it to invisible things. (laughs) He then stopped doing that and laid on his back, and there was pounding in the air like someone was scratching his belly. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. No. uh Uh-uh. Don't like it. I mean, it's nice that it's your grandma, but don't like it. Oh, my God. I mean, I assume it is. This went on for about 10 minutes. Oh, by the way, my grandmother absolutely loved cats and used to own a black cat just like him and used to own four others. I was so picturing him black, too. That's funny. He never does this at any other time or any other place in the house. He also did it again about a week ago at exactly 11.30 p.m. Thoughts about this? Think my cat can see my grandmother as well? Uh, yeah, I do. Absolutely, and I think your grandmother needs to know that 11.30 is late. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I was thinking that must have been her bedtime. 11.30? How does she wake up to do breakfast and her, like, crossword puzzles and all that shit? My grandma used to go to bed at 10.30 every night after the nightly news. What time does she wake up and do her shit? Six. (sighs) I know. I'm not cut out for old age unless I'm one of those that sleeps all the damn time. That's That's the cruelty of old age. You need less sleep when you have more time to get it. (laughs) Dang. Yes, I think that cat can for sure see your grandma. For sure. Ah, shit. Uh Uh-oh, what? Okay, this one is called Giggles in the Dark. I already don't like it. Hola, mijas, Chiquita. Oh. (laughs) I'm like the most (laughs) terrible person to say that. (laughs) I think you did well. Currently listening to your podcast, and I just remember this small paranormal moment that happened to me when I was 19. Here we go. I was staying the night at my mom's house and was scrolling through YouTube on my laptop for paranormal slash Illuminati stuff. (laughs) I mean, as one does. I mean. Look, I'm looking up Illuminati stuff, and let me just say, if I go missing, we know, well, we don't know who's got me because, I mean, who are they? But we know why. Or also because of the alien shit I look up and, Mm -hmm. you know, all of that. I feel like we're definitely on a watch list somewhere. (laughs) For sure. For sure. They're just, like, waiting for you to sign up to Storm Area 51 and you're a goner. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Oh, God. I was in this small room that leads to the front porch on the second floor. Fancy. Mm -hmm. That's a she-she porch. (laughs) That's a she-she shed if I've ever heard of one. (laughs) In this room, there's not much lighting, and since my mom hates the light being on, I literally had all the lights out in the house. That sounds like fucking Donna. (laughs) That girl hates damn lights on. (laughs) But then we'll come to my house and be like, it's so dark. I'm like, you hate lights. Your hallway gives me the creeps. So I need it on. Mm -hmm. The only thing that lit that room, aside from the laptop light, was the moon slash the lights from outside. As I was scrolling through YouTube, I clicked on the video of a Little Wayne song called I Feel Like Dying, played in reverse. If you haven't heard it, you should. It's fucking creepy. While I'm creeping myself out, I hear laughter from a kid's toy in the dark living room. Nope. Mind you, no one was home. It was just me and my little dog, Cheepy. So the doll, which was Cheepy's toy, laughed once and then stopped. Then I see Cheepy walk towards me from the dark, scared with her tail down. So I stopped the clip and said, Cheepy, you okay? 
That's when I heard the laugh again. Ha 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 ha. He 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 he. Uh-uh. That shit ain't funny. <laughs> <laughs> the first time it laughed, I thought it was Cheapy playing with the doll. But then when she walked up to me, the doll kept laughing. I knew it was paranormal. What made it worse, this doll had one distinct laugh. The second time she laughed, it was weird, almost malicious, and it kept going. Uh Uh-uh. That's when it truly freaked me out. Needless to say, I closed the laptop, hopped out of the sofa, and ran to the front porch and waited there till my mom came back. At the end, Cheapy and I had a great relaxing night out. Perfect weather to sleep on the second floor porch. Sincerely, creeping it real, Ketsy. Wowza. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> of course it had to get like a malicious laugh too. Like right. it had to change. Mm-mm. Let me hear your malicious laugh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Go from like a hee-hee-hee <laughs> to a malicious laugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um two years. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so to hard do. I can't think of the <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, you just sounded like we're on fucking Fighting Nemo. Shark <laughs> <Yes>. bait. <laughs> <laughs> oh it is the blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> fucking always round. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. I accidentally didn't get blown up by Nazis. Howdy again, ladies. Wait, Nazis? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Blown up? Mm Mm-hmm, but didn't. But didn't, okay. Howdy again, ladies. I know I just sent in a massive novel of a creeper story yesterday, but you mentioned in one of the earlier Sinister Sightings episodes there are a lot more paranormal stories than true crime, so here's the true crime story of how I didn't get blown up by Nazis. On January 20th, 2009... I was packed like a sardine into a subway station filled with people crying tears of joy, waving flags, and generally not caring that more and more subway cars packed with people kept arriving. In the midst of the chaos, a triumphant voice rang out above the crowd, We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. All around me, people started raising their hands and took up the song filling the entire station and echoing off the walls to create a heavenly chorus I can't possibly describe. I'm tearing up right now remembering it. Gosh. Finally, we slowly joined the other 1.8 million people cramming onto the National Mall. That's right, it was Obama's first inauguration. It was cold as fuck, wind chill in the teens, and I have a medical condition, rain odds, That puts me at a pretty high risk for frostbite, but fuck it. My fingers and toes could fall the hell off if they didn't want to be part of history. That is so fucking cool. I mean, not about her fingers and toes falling off, maybe, possibly, but being there. Yeah. None of us knew, though, that on December 9th, 2009, Amber Cummings saved all of our lives by shooting her husband in the head while he slept. What? Ooh. Now, the idea that she saved any lives at all is contested by various government agencies and Reddit addicts, neither of which is a group I tend to put my full trust in. So here are the undisputed facts of the case. Amber Cummings found herself and her nine-year-old daughter, Clara, in a nightmare of a marriage that was swiftly becoming unspeakably, bizarrely horrific, almost to the point where you'd read about it in a book and think it was a horrifying sequel to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Gosh. To begin with, her husband James was physically, mentally, and emotionally abusive, making her homeschool their daughter and isolating her from anyone outside of the home. On top of that, he was a Nazi in the most freaking psychotic way, such as dreaming of building a torture dungeon in their basement so he could peel off people's skin. What? Holy shit. Like, literally, that made my stomach hurt. Oh my gosh. Ugh, yes. Shivers. Me timber. 
He was such a fanboy of Adolf Hitler that he was probably writing love letters in his diary to Der Fuhrer. Oh, Lord, did I say that right? About how he'd choose Hitler over Aaron Carter or some bonkers crap like that. <laughs> Aaron Carter! <laughs> <laughs> On top of that, the man was massively, massively, massively addicted to child porn. Oh, no. I mean, massively. Like, whoa. There is no way to describe the quantity and depravity of shit that filled his computer. So one day, Amber notices him looking at Clara in a weird way. He started teaching her to be a good little racist, government-hating Nazi, having her memorize speeches she'd give when the Nazis took over, and she became in charge of brainwashing the women and children of the New Order. Oh, this makes my stomach hurt. What the handmaid's tale is going on? Mm -hmm. He started going for long nighttime strolls through the neighborhood and came home to watch his favorite TV show, I Shit You Not, Dexter. Oh, fuck. Dexter. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) D-E-X-T-E-R. Oh, shit. And all through this... His weird looks at Clara are turning more and more into some fucking sexual nightmare version of the Mad Hatter. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Finally, it all became too much, and Amber knew that he was going to take out his gross, evil, Nazi sexual insanity on their daughter. She was so terrified of him that she didn't know if she'd be able to stop him. All she knew was that she had no fear of going to prison for whatever she needed to do, and her brain, allegedly took that as permission to turn on autopilot. So she shot him in the fucking head while he was asleep. The entire world suddenly rejoiced for a second, and then we all wondered what the hell we just did that for. When the police came, they found a literal fuck ton of Nazi shit. In this context, a fuck ton is is defined as so much that an officer later testified under oath that the motherfucker was a danger to the public. And then they found the shit that got the FBI involved, specifically the ingredients for a dirty bomb for which those listening who do not know is basically a DIY nuclear bomb. This bomb was to be detonated at the inauguration and depending on who you listen to slash believe was going to blast the whole mall with deadly radiation or just adorably pop off like a box of those tiny things of gunpowder you throw at your siblings feet during the 4th of July. Oh, my God. The government officially says there is no public threat from the bomb material. I grew up watching the X-Files, so, yeah. I'm going to go with the other analysis that says the FBI probably wouldn't have noticed this goose-stepping piece of garbage's plot, and we'd all be living in a very different world, except for me and a lot of my friends and some really influential people. That's so scary. Wow. We'd all be haunting the National Mall and kicking it with awesome people like Alexander Hamilton and Harriet Tubman and Michelle Obama. Because seriously, how cool would that be? Except, like, not. (laughs) Maybe someday, but not because of a dirty bomb lit off by a Nazi fucker. Amber Cummings was charged with murder and received an eight-year sentence, which the judge immediately suspended because she's a goddamn hero. She's on parole and can't leave her current town for those eight years. But she adores the town, and the neighbors adore her. She's been able to reprogram Clara to not be racist and insane like her father, and she's reconnected with her family, who her husband completely cut out of her life. In all seriousness, I truly believe I owe my life to Amber Cummings, who had to commit a horrific act to save herself and her daughter, never realizing she was possibly saving 1.8 million people in the process. Thank you, Amber. Wow. Seriously? Chills. Like, I have chill bumps. I know. If y'all choose to use this sinister sighting, please remind the listeners that there are so many resources for people who are in or know of someone in an abusive relationship. In the United States, there are three ways to contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline by phone 1-800-799-7233, by text at 1-800-787-3224, and by live chat at http colon forward slash forward slash www.thehotline.org slash what dash is dash live dash chat forward slash dot. Whew, that was a lot. The National Resource Center on Domestic Violence is www.nrcdv.org 
forward slash D-V-R-N forward slash. There are people out there who already care about you and are waiting to help you escape. I hope y'all enjoyed today's novel. I still adore the podcast as much as I did yesterday, so creep it up. Love, Cat Jones, that crazy chick in the Facebook group who posts way too much. <laughs> oh, my God, Cat. I should have known it was her from her writing. Yeah, I oh, know. my God. I, I was going to say earlier, they write just like they talk. You know, yes. you can tell. Well, in all seriousness, that ending is so true. If you yes. are in a situation in which you are not safe, please reach out to someone for help That because there are people, there's some really good resources in cities for people who need anything. Like, I know whenever I did one of my field works in Tampa, it was at the Tampa Bay Crisis Center, and they had resources. It was, it was there. It was 211 was the number, but... It was a hotline that you could call even if you couldn't pay your electric bill. You could call. It had a suicide line. It had, you know, you could call for help. They just have had so many programs to help you get out of abusive situations. And so it's available. If you need it, please seek help. Yes. And we will put all of that information in the show notes. Show notes. Yeah. So that was a um, really good story. And thank you for sharing. You would I never would have heard of that. No, no. God, that makes, it just makes my stomach hurt when you think of the, you know, because when you think of a terrorist, you think of someone away, Mm -hmm. not someone like, as they say, a homegrown terrorist. Yeah. That makes my stomach hurt so bad. Ugh. Just be nice and love people, even if they're different from you. I I mean, and I know that that's preaching to the choir because you're listening to us, you, you feel that way. But, I mean, I assume. (laughs) I mean, maybe... I don't know. Maybe you just really like extra large pizza. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. This one is called Potential Sinister Sightings Fodder. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Fodder. (laughs) Hey, ladies. Love the podcast. It makes my Monday morning commute something to look forward to. This story isn't as intense or scary as some of the other sinister sightings you get, but spooky nonetheless. It's 2009, and I moved back to my hometown and find an apartment. The building I moved into has always carried the nickname Heroin Heights. Heroin wasn't really a thing there at that time anyway. It also had a reputation for being haunted. It wasn't long before little things started. My volume on my record player would fluctuate until I asked it to stop. Lights flickered. I caught orbs in pictures. The laundry was in the scariest fuck basement. I walked down with my laundry once and turned around with a big carry style. Uh, fuck no. <laughs> I went to the laundromat after that oh instead. Oh my god. Yes. Oh. Why is laundry always in the fucking basement and it's always fucking scary? I don't know. And the one time I've had basement laundry, I hit my fucking head on the shit going down the steps. <laughs> and that hurt. <laughs> Probably on your phone. It made me, like, bite my tongue, too. Ooh, I don't know fuck. what I... Oh. Were you on your me. phone? No, it wasn't. I can't go downstairs on the phone. I'll fall. <laughs> I have to look at the steps. Same. Well, I take them one at a time. So. I have sprained my ankle way too many times. I gotta gotta watch it. <laughs> watch out for pebbles. <laughs> I was gonna say, how's that working out for you? <laughs> Not well. My closet had stuff hanging on the inside of the door, so the door was always left wide open. Has to be wide open or closed. No creepy cracks. The closet was on the same wall as the bed not far down the hall. I had just turned out the light and was settling in to sleep when I heard a sound from the closet. Mm -mm. The best way I can describe it is like a cat jumping down onto the hardwood floor. Cat-like paw sounds toward my bed. Then it feels like something jumps up at the foot of the bed and ran across the foot of the bed. Over my damn feet. Nope. Then back. Nope. Jumps off, goes back to the closet. No holes in the closet. I was on the third floor. I have no explanation. Don't like that at all. Mm Mm-mm. After a moment of shock, I flew up, turned on the light, checked around. I slept with the light on for the next two weeks. Mm Mm-mm. Oh, my goodness gracious. No, ma'am. Uh-uh. 
I was in a really dark place at the time, fresh out of a horribly toxic relationship, and I was nursing a pretty fragile soul. I was self-medicating in all the worst ways. There were many long, lonely nights where I towed the line of the permanent solution. Oh, gosh. As I started to swing that way, I would feel a hand touching my hair in a comforting way. I would swing back the other way emotionally. Oh, my gosh. I know. Thank you for being so, like, raw and Mm -hmm. real. My final month of renting the space, I moved out two weeks early, but still had some stuff there. When I met the caretaker for my walkthrough, she said something very interesting. She said, oh, Mike must have scared you the other night. What? Mm Mm-hmm. Mike is a maintenance guy. What? They knew I wasn't staying there, and as it was close to the end of the month, he checked to see if I was out yet. When he opened the door, he said he saw a young woman crying in the corner of the living room. <gasps> I thought you were about to say fucking Mike was who was playing with her hair. Same, same. I was about to say, whoo, that took a turn. I was like, this isn't paranormal? Oh, shit. Okay. I told her it wasn't me. I hadn't been there in the evening for two weeks. The door was a deadbolt lock only. So the likelihood of breaking in and relocking the deadbolt on their way out, pretty slim. While doing my walkthrough, she was telling me about cleaning the apartment across the hall. She said she had her keys down on the counter. When she came back, they were gone. She found them at the bottom of her mop bucket. What? Oh my gosh. I hope it wasn't a clicker. (laughs) Well, it's her keys for the... Yeah, but if it's got a damn gate thing or some shit like that. Oh, true, true. You two are awesome. Keep creeping it real, Natasha. Oh, my God. That had so many twists and turns. Yes. Well, first of all, I'm so glad that you were safe. Yes. Emotionally and physically from Mike. 100%. Because that was the turn that I thought you were taking. Uh Uh-huh. So glad that it was a kind, loving ghost that comforted you when you needed it. Natasha, you said these weren't intense or whatever. Uh, yes, they were, honey. Uh-huh. I was, like, bated breath over here. <laughs> Is that the saying? Is that the yes. accurate? <sighs> I really do have some anxiety from that story. Right? Whew. That was a good one. Whew, whew, whew. Okay, last one. Okay. Are you ready for this, Donna? Okay. Let's okay. do it. Let's do it. Okay. Y'all asked for it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we ask for a lot. <laughs> So, for about a year, I took Ambien. Oh, fuck yeah. I don't know what that She just did the chicken dance. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. She just did her wings like, da na 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 I did my wings. Y'all gonna have that damn song in your head all oh, day. Oh, okay, okay. The first thing that we noticed happening is I'd go to bed buck naked and wake up fully clothed, <laughs> bra and all. What? And you put it on correctly? So, I decided to start wearing clothes to bed. Well, that meant I would just take them off in the middle of the night. (laughs) Make up your damn mind. (laughs) Then I started to sleep eat. We only figured this out when I woke up my husband, who is an Iraqi war veteran. Oh, fuck. By holding a peanut butter covered butcher knife over him while he slept. What? (laughs) Holy shit. That's me saying holy shit, not, not her. My nose would be like... And then wake up and be like, oh, fuck, this is how I die. (laughs) Okay. So, holding a knife over him while he slept, screaming. (laughs) (laughs) Screaming. (laughs) 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 Screaming. You want a sandwich, sexy (laughs) butt? Sexy (laughs) butt. I had before, never, and not since, called him Sexy Buns. (laughs) (laughs) This resulted in all the knives in the house having to be put away after I went to bed. (laughs) Oh, God, this is a really good story. The last straw was when he found me butt-ass naked sitting on the cold concrete in the garage, eating a gallon of Bluebell ice cream with a wooden spoon in the middle of December. (laughs) That sounds, spoon. That is, that's hard as fuck. That sounds like a really good vacay. 
The next day, we went to the doctor and got a new sleep med. Still to this day, my husband flinches a little when I offer him a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Kayla Kay. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Y'all, these Sexy stories... Bugs. I need more of them in my life. These are great palate cleansers. Sexy buns. That's the best thing ever. She said, nor have I called him that since. <laughs> <laughs> you want a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, trigger warning for him. Shit. I, girl, I'm glad Lucky. y'all both are alive. Yes. Like, Truly. Wow, that was hilarious, Kayla. Thank oh you for the God. perfect ending. <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh. So y'all keep sending them. The ambient stories, the paranormal, the true crime, yes. the creepy kid shit. We were talking about that today at work, how kids just say creepy shit. And it's like, how you know that? Yes. Man, y'all never disappoint. These are amazing. So freaking good. Like, had chill bumps, laughed till I needed to pee. Yes, we laughed. We cried. We appreciate your candidness, your honesty. Yes. Pouring out your soul to these to share because this is how people grow and learn by hearing, you know, other people's struggles. Yeah. And so I appreciate y'all being so honest with your struggles. And again, if you need help in any way, whether it's mental health help or to get out of an unsafe situation, please seek help. Yes. Because you are loved, people are willing to help, people want to help you, because you're worth it. Yes, but do not try to wake anyone up with a peanut butter covered knife and call them sexy buns. I mean, it is a butter knife. Hey. Peanut butter. Oh. See, she had the right knife. On that note, remember. Creep it real and and don't don't get get scared. scared.